I ended up getting pregnant with my second child, and that's when the cheating started. When I was seven months pregnant with my son, another girl was claiming that she was three months pregnant by him. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Ten years ago, when Marquita Cox was sweet 16, she met and fell madly in love with 19-year-old Stephen McCauley. They wasted little time moving in together and starting a family, trusting that they were on the road to everlasting love. But instead, with accusations of cheating and hair trigger tempers, they found themselves at the end of the road. I called her phone and talked to her. Yes, me and Steve was messing around. We've been messing around now for a few months. I am pregnant by Steve, and I didn't know anything about you. There's been times where I look in her phone, and I see text messages and, and Facebook messages popping up from different guys saying how, oh, we need to go out to the movies tomorrow, or we're going to be out, and, uh, you know, how's your day, baby? Marquita and Steven are here seeking a dissolution of cohabitation. Today on Divorce Court. All right. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Marquita Cox and Stephen McCauley. The two of you have been together for 10 years, and you two have three children together. You, however, do not want to be together anymore. You have some uh, significant financial issues that you would like to resolve, and we will talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Ms. Cox, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? Okay. When I first met Stephen McCauley, he was the best boyfriend you could ever want. I was 16 years old. I was young. He was different from all the other guys I had ever been with. He just really shared a lot in common with me. So mm -hmm. I, I really felt comfortable around him. And so after about a month of us knowing each other, I ended up quickly getting pregnant with my daughter. And after that, the relationship has been rocky ever since then. I ended up getting pregnant with my second child, and that's when the cheating started. He was, um, supposedly had another girl, when I was seven months pregnant with my son, another girl was claiming that she was three months pregnant by him. Never knew anything about him messing around or anything. We were in an actual relationship, living together, doing the family thing. Raising the kids, all yes. that. So I ended up going through his phone and talking to the girl. I, I called her phone and talked to her. Yes, me and Steve was messing around. We've been messing around now for a few months, and I didn't know anything about you, is what she told me. They had been messing around for months before I had even found out. Ms. Cox told a very well-ordered, <laughs> chronological story <laughs> about your relationship. Mr. McCauley, would you care yes. to respond? I really would, because first off, Your Honor, I mean, you know, so sad as it sounds, you know, when I first met Marquita, I met her through, you know, a uh, friend of ours, and she was a cute young girl, you know. I had just came home from college, and I wanted to meet some new people, so she came over. And the actual truth is, she got pregnant like the first week we met each other, and it was like two weeks of knowing each other, not a month. It was like more like a week or two. So at that point, you know, uh, her and I did agree. We moved in together, you know. Uh, like I said, after she became pregnant with my daughter, we had our differences. From that point, I mean, things just started going downhill. It was people all involved in our relationship. She was still young. I was young. We're going back and forth about, you know, this person on the phone, that person on the phone, how much time you're spending at home. And it, it just got overwhelming. So I admit it, yes, I did cheat, and I was out, you know, doing what I wasn't supposed to do at a current time in our relationship. But as I said, you know, she's been, herself has been a cheater. I feel like she cheats on me. There's been times where I look in her phone, and I see text messages and, and Facebook messages popping up from different guys saying how, oh, we need to go out to the movies tomorrow or we're going to be out and, uh, you know, how's your day, baby? And are you doing, how you, are you having a good day today? And I'm like, wow, you know, these right here are messages that a man's going to text you because it's not no name popping up. It's just a number right. and some text messages. But these but are you men. Down. Yeah, these aren't, these aren't women or her girls calling. Got a question nothing. for you. Doesn't anybody these days think Huh. About to have sex. Let's do some birth control. Nobody makes a trip to the drugstore, nothing. And it just doesn't seem that important anymore. She told me that, you know, she was allergic to condoms at the time. So 
I took that to my advantage and, you know, just... Never tell him that I was allergic to condoms. We both uh, were grown and knew man. what we were doing. Wow. No, we didn't. We wore protection about two or three times that we did have sex. And we both were grown, knew what we were doing. We both decided you that we were You were 16, gonna... you weren't grown. I'm saying, but I was grown enough to know that having sex, what, what that can lead to, having a baby. When Divorce Court continues, Marquita kicks her private investigation skills up a notch. As soon as they linked up, she immediately called me. I'm saying, hello, hello. She's just letting the phone go. Let me listen to him tell her, oh, yeah, I don't really want to be with her no more. I told you where I'm at. Are you dealing with baby mama drama or baby daddy drama that has you ready to divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Marquita Cox, who claims her longtime boyfriend Stephen is nothing more than a longtime cheater. But are Stephen's infidelities an ongoing occurrence or a mere snapshot in time? There was pictures in there of her dancing for him in front of her bathroom, pictures of them two actually in intercourse on this camera. Give me some examples of the type of cheating he was doing or what he was doing and how you found out about it. Okay, my first example would be when me and him got into an argument. Um, we, I believe this was when my son was probably like about two years old, we had got into an argument and decided that we were going to go ahead and just separate for a while. Every day that we had decided to separate, we were only separated for about a month and a half, but every day he was over my house, every single night, s doing the same fatherly things with the kids. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, still sleeping with me unprotectedly mm -hmm. and making me think that this was just a small breakup, that we were right. just we going just, to separate. We're cooling off, period. Right. So <clears throat> I ended up on Father's Day getting two phones put in my name. Mm -hmm. And with these two phones, there came a feature on the phone where you could get a service where all your uh, text messaging and your in incoming and outcoming calls comes to an uh, online account. Okay. And so I set it up to where I had everything coming to my online from both of the phone lines. So I can see everything. All the text messages that I send out come in, all the text messages he sends out and that comes into his phone. I'm reading through the Did text you know messages. About that? <laughs> Later on, I found out, yeah. but at first, no, <laughs> I did first, not know. No, you did not Couldn't know about it because yeah. I'm reading through right. the text messages and there was an out of town number. And when I looked through the messages, it kept saying stuff like, I'm leaving the key under the mat for you, and just different little like sexual messages that were on the phone. So I immediately called the girl. Right. And the, the, what she says is, um, don't call me, call your dude. So I, she hangs up the phone on me. So I called him, and of course, he denied it. Later on that evening, them two ended up linking up together. And because when I called her, I didn't block my number, she had my number still in her phone. As Soon as they linked up, she immediately called me. I'm saying, hello, hello. She's just letting the phone go. Let me listen to him tell her, oh, yeah, I don't really want to be with her no more. I told you where I'm at. Uh, she, she's oh, just an uneducated wow. welfare hoe, and she's on Section 8, and they I don't want to be nothing. you out from beginning to end. She, it, did all that happen? The incident did happen. It's a true incident. Um, you know, I'm going to admit Can't to that. Can't deny it, yeah. No, I, I got busted. But it was just a thing where me and her were just going through our own problems, and... You know, I was kind of playing back and forth because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And how about the videos and the pictures you found of him? He had a, it was this digital camera that he had supposedly purchased for me. He was saying, "Look, I bought you a new toy." I ended up going through the camera and finding pictures of the girl that I was telling you about mm -hmm. with the out-of-town number. Mm -hmm. There was pictures in there of her dancing for him in front of her bathroom, pictures of them two actually in intercourse on this camera. Like, he's using the camera no. for some kind of a sex toy. <laughs> no, no. The pictures, <laughs> sexual intercourse video, I don't know nothing about all that. Your she Honor, said she's seen it. pictures of him inside she's of this camera she's holding seen his it, thing so, in his hand. Hey, but I can, <laughs> no. <laughs> When Divorce Court continues, is Marquita making family decisions based on a Happy Meal? I'm at the McDonald's at the dollar menu making lifetime decisions on whether or not I'm going to get a double cheeseburger <laughs> or a quarter pounder. I'm tired of that. 
If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Stephen McCauley, who claims his live-in girlfriend has a bad temper. But is Marquita's temper always hot and ready? She's kicking, screaming, punching, takes the whole pizza hot and ready, throws it all in the car. Kids looking around, they don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh my God. You say that you're concerned about his lack of motivation uh, with respect to employment and his financial circumstances. Yes. Explain that to me. Steven has to do a certain type of job. If it's not a certain type of job that he wants to do, he won't do it. So when he's in between jobs, if there's another job that's hiring and it's not something that he feels like he wants to do, he just won't do it. I come home one day and tell him that there's a trash company hiring, but this particular trash company only pays you minimum wage, which was mm -hmm. 750. Mm -hmm. Oh no, 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 that doesn't make enough for me. I'm not, I'm not about to take no job jumping on and off of trucks, only making 750 an hour. To... You're not making anything right now, though. No, so, so 750 is better than nothing. Exactly, especially when what, the bills are only on one person. That 750 could go a long way on right. top of the income that I'm already bringing in. So he takes all of his money and the money that he had already had saved up and puts it into a promoting company. He ended up trying to do a promotion company where he was going to promote local talent. Him and his friend ended up opening up an after-hour bar, and the after-hour bar was a bar full of nothing but nude strippers inside a big blow-up um, pool. It opened up about probably 11 or 12 at night, and it didn't shut down till 5 in the morning. Now, with me being with the cheater already, I'm not comfortable with that. Did it, did it not work out, Mr. McCauley? Well, it's not that, you know, it didn't work out. It's what happened is... I kind of made an initial investment on some things that I really didn't have all the, the answers. What I did was I invested money into the wrong tools <coughs> to get the company off the ground. So right. it caused relationship problems for us and financial mm -hmm. situations because I wasn't making the money, but I was spending a whole lot of it. And, and I get you, but I, I respect your entrepreneurial spirit, but why are you being an entrepreneur? You still got to bring in money. Seven fifty an hour is better than nothing an hour. True. And, and, and that's just what that is. <laughs> My understanding is she would get her hair done as opposed to paying the electric bill. Listen to this, Your Honor. We come to a point where my daughter's having a birthday party. Now, we got this party going on, and we know, both of us know that we got an electric bill that's due. Right. So she wants to take and get her hair done for this kid's party that we normally have every year, but she wants to look good at the party. Right. It's $150 to get some micro braids done. Our bill at the time was $180. She'd rather get these micro braids done for the, uh, for the party to pay the bill. The following week come by, here we are, you know, the, 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 the electric company don't give me a call and say, all right, uh, you got this amount of days to pay the bill. They come and knock at my door, boom, boom, boom. I open the door, it's a lady saying, hey, you got this amount of, you got one hour or we're cutting your electric off and I'm gonna sit here and wait for you to go pay the bill. My thing is that I work every single day, so if I'm paying all There's the bills... There's been times she hasn't worked. Yeah. She hasn't worked. There's been a lot of times where, you know, she's been but, out of work. Yeah, but you work every single day. Every go single ahead. day and where it's all on me. So mm -hmm. sometimes I do get tired of paying all the bills by myself. I do get tired of living paycheck to paycheck. I do get tired of hustling and busting my butt and not having not, no extra money. I'm at the McDonald's at the dollar menu making lifetime decisions on whether or not I'm going to get a double <laughs> cheeseburger <laughs> or a quarter pounder. I'm tired of that. You know what okay. I'm saying? So I'm just like... Well, if, you were, if you're not cool, if you're worried about how much you can afford at McDonald's, why $200 on the hair? Because bills are always going to be there. And I feel like if he really cares, then step up and be a man. Don't wait for me to pay every single bill. Regardless if you have a job or not, you need to get out here and figure it out. Let me tell you where you're both wrong. I wrote a book about marriage, and one of the biggest chapters was about not about touching, <laughs> wasn't about sex, it wasn't about talking, it wasn't about none of that. It was about money. Because money is at the bottom of a whole lot of problems. And there's a rule in the book, rule number three, and it says, damn the Joneses. The Joneses are keeping everybody broke. You looking at the Joneses house, the Joneses don't own that house. The Bank of America owns that house. You're, you're confused. When Divorce Court continues, will Stephen be ordered to pay for wrecking Marquita's car? A car that was coming this way, he backed up in two, so they mm -hmm. collided together. Mm -hmm. Because the car was registered in my name and I had no, no um, insurance, car insurance, they are saying that all that is underneath me now.
Divorce Court returns with the case of Marquita Cox and Stephen McCulley, who after 10 years of living together are seeking a dissolution of cohabitation. He's also a liar, so well, it's like... Well, tell me about the lying, and then you're gonna tell me about the money. He lied and told me he was in jail. So I didn't have license at the time. Mm -hmm. I ended up calling my mom. Mom, can you take me to go get Steve? Oh my goodness, he was in jail last night. So we get there to the where the jail precinct was at that he was saying. He's not even there. He's across the street walking back and forth. And I'm like thinking to myself, when they let you out of jail, they don't even let you leave unless you have a ride or something coming to pick you up. So how is he just freely walking across walking the, street? Up and down the street? So when I got back to the house, it still wasn't sitting well with me. I called the jail and asked them, did they have a Stephen McCauley? They asked for his social security number. Gave them all that. No, we never had a Stephen McCauley in here. <laughs> and he said, well, you know what, babe, you don't gotta call him back. I wasn't really there. I just, we was arguing and I didn't feel like answering the phone and I didn't want to come home that night. So that's why I didn't come. So the story you told was I got, I was in jail? <laughs> Sometimes I gotta say a few things because I don't really want to tell her what's going on because her temper is horrible. Like, you can say something to her, she'll flip a switch in a heartbeat. It's like, you know, one time we were riding, uh, we're coming back from bowling alley, everybody's in the car, I got my kids in the car, I'm in the car. I get out of the car to go outside of a restaurant to pick up a pizza for the family. As I come outside the door, I get into, I get into the car, she picks up my phone, she's on the phone. Uh, uh who is this? And who would you say, you know, how you know him? And yada, yada, I'm like, who is that? She hangs up the phone, hands me the phone, starts, Flipping out in the car, she's kicking, screaming, punching, takes the whole pizza hot and ready, throws it all in the car. Kids looking around, they don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh my God. Did you lose your mind in the I car? I did lose my mind. I am so tired of every time I go through his phone, there's always something to find. He wants to sit and constantly talk about what I do on my phone and oh, what I do. Oh, this brother's me. wrong nine ways from Sunday. He's doing the wrong <laughs> thing with the wrong woman and he's doing it all the time. All I'm gonna ask of you is don't you let that rain on your children. And every time you, you go nuclear in their presence, it's not good for them. You're right, I just got tired and of seeing- And it won't stop him. You're you absolutely right. All right. Now, now uh, uh, tell me about this uh, uh, $2,990 you're seeking from Mr. McCauley. Okay, we were on my way, on the way to my daughter's graduation, her kindergarten graduation. We had to stop and get my son something to wear. As we're backing out of the parking lot from getting him something to wear, Stephen was the driver of my vehicle. A car that was coming this way, he backed up in two, so they mm -hmm. collided together. Mm -hmm. Because the car was registered in my name and I had no, no um, insurance, car insurance, they are saying that all that is underneath me now. Months after that, I start getting these letters in the mail stating that I owed $29.90. And mm -hmm. then about three or four months after that happened, they ended up suspending my license because it was still not paid. No, the judgment wasn't paid and they just suspended And now license. I can't get my license back at all. Mr. McCauley, what would you like to say about that? Do you believe you owe her the $29.90? I feel like this. We were both in the same car. If that's the case, you know, it, it, it's a adult's responsibility to have insurance. You know, we got some financial you know, responsibility. Well, were you driving? We I was the driver of the car, but that's so only because she don't never want to drive. It's like... But you didn't have insurance. She want me to be driving Miss Daisy all the time. It's like, wherever we gotta go, she want me to drive. And she knows how to Did drive. Did you know he didn't have insurance? Yeah, or I know license. he didn't have or insurance. Or license, but she still wants me to drive. And, and you knew he didn't have a license? Yes. And you let him drive your car? Mm-hmm. Your bad. I mean, it is. I mean, it's your bad. I'm not gonna make him pay you back for that. I mean, okay. you, you let an uninsured, unlicensed driver behind the wheel of your car. I mean, never I think, had license, I think, I think on, a mor on a moral level, you, why? Because you got suspended before you ever got they a license? They keep getting suspended. Suspended, yeah. suspended, suspended, and then you can never get them back. You know what, I like you people. I, uh, I think you do the wrong thing sometimes. I think you're in an environment where the wrong thing pops off a lot and you're just kind of in that wash of that environment, but you guys got three children together. Uh, I think you need to grow up. I think you need to learn how to talk instead of just to react. But uh, act like, you know, you're not getting any money, for sure. <laughs> but uh, act like you got some sense for those kids. You never know. You might grow up enough that you can actually make it work. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. Stephen says he and Marquita decided to stay together after they got back home. But they almost broke up again when she went through his phone and found questionable messages. However, they have made up and are committed to keeping their family together.